Good afternoon. It's Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Another gray day here in Iowa. Woke up to some fog, but not too bad, all things considered. Um, it looks like we'll be clear of snow for the next few days, and so we're grateful for that. A few announcements I want to touch on today. Uh, there will be no services at this time from Marilyn Moody. Uh, we continue to extend our love and sympathy to her family, but for the near term, there will be no services. Services for my mom's funeral will be postponed until summer or perhaps early fall. I do thank you for all your love and support uh, since mom has died. It's been very helpful to us all. We continue to pray for all of those dealing with COVID-19. Uh, the pandemic is surging a bit here in Iowa. We don't know if this is a temporary thing due to the holidays or if it's another long-term surge. We are going to keep an eye on it just to make certain that we stay on top of it. Remember, live in-person worship this coming Sunday at both congregations, 8.30 at St. Paul's and 10.30 at First. Both services are going to be live streamed as well as available for FM broadcast 95.5 for St. Paul and 87.9 for First. First Lutheran has its council meeting this coming Sunday, January 10th, and that'll be following the worship service. St. Paul's annual meeting has been moved to February 14th, after 10.30 worship, and please keep that date in mind. First Lutheran's annual meeting will be on Sunday, January 24th, following the worship service. And this year there will be no potluck along with the annual meeting. All meetings at church, council meetings, confirmation classes, and in this case annual meetings, can be Zoomed as well. So if you would like to attend via Zoom, um, please let me know. And that way I will get you on a list for the particular meeting coming up so that, so that you too can participate in the meeting. I think those are the announcements I'm going to touch on today. I'd like to turn to Romans chapter 13 and read a few verses from that chapter. <clears throat> Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, he who resists authorities resists what God has appointed, and for those who resist, resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to a good conscience, but to a bad. Would you have no fear of him who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God to execute his wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay all of them their dues, taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. I know I don't like what happened yesterday. I do not approve of citizens storming the halls of Congress, destroying and disrupting everything that was going on in the building. As of this count, four lives were lost because of that. The process of the government was interrupted. People who should have known better acted like a childish mob and destroyed things that were not theirs to destroy. But then again, I said the same things about the mobs who were rioting in our cities, those who burned down buildings and neighborhoods, those who destroyed things, those who took lives. They were no more honorable or without blame than those who raided the halls of Congress yesterday. As a Christian, and as a pastor of the Christian faith, I take Paul's words in Romans 13 seriously. We are, insofar as it is possible with us, without compromising the faith, to obey the government. We don't do this mindlessly. We do not act as sheep, but as thoughtful citizens of a nation. If there is injustice or wrongdoing, there are ways to redress it. If there are things within our government that are not working, we have the means by which we can correct it. Openly revolting against 
legitimate authority is a dangerous step to take. It has been dangerous all summer long when people overextended their rightful protests about injustice into rampant and indiscriminate rioting and looting. And it was wrong yesterday when people who rightly were protesting what they believed to be an unfair election took a step too far and invaded the halls of Congress. I'm not going to make a political accusation of either party. There is no one without blame in this mess. And so first thing I would ask you is on social media, stop trying to find someone to blame. Stop trying to point a finger at the party you disagree with. Stop trying to lay the accusations at someone's feet. No one, I mean no one, is clean in this matter. What we can do is to begin conversations with those who are on the opposite end of the spectrum from us. To talk about what we believe and what we hold dear and why we think it's worth preserving. Also to talk about what we believe needs reforming within our government and in our nation. To find the common ground that makes for a useful and productive government and nation. Yes, there will always be those on the fringes who will not abide listening to anyone. They have a right to say what they say, even if it is repugnant to you. But the best way to deal with them is to simply not respond. To keep an eye on what they're doing, because some of them are indeed dangerous. But not to rise to the bait, not to respond to their rhetoric. And continue to engage one another in useful and productive dialogue. I am confident that among the nations of the world, the United States is one of the best. If you look at everything we have and what we have accomplished and what we are working to accomplish, there are few, if any, nations more free, more just, more fair than the United States. We are not a perfect nation. We have never been a perfect nation. Anyone who thinks they can make a nation perfect needs to look at the Soviet Union, the Communist Revolution, and the ideals that were going to make everybody equal, everybody of same financial status, and see how that worked out. Seeking to enforce perfection on human beings is resulting in one of two things. It will result in revolution, or it will result in oppressive violence. That has always been the case, and as long as human beings are sinners, that will always be the case. And so we work together as people who are imperfect. We work together as people who are forgiven sinners. We work together as people for whom God has delegated his authority to the nation so that it might rule justly and fairly, and we might participate in the governance of our nation and in the care for our neighbor. It's time enough to stop racing to the extreme. It's more than time enough to put down the extreme rhetoric and to stop the baseless accusations. It is time, especially for us as Christians, to take seriously our responsibility to be citizens who are supportive of the government insofar as it is just and fair for all citizens and it does not conflict with the will and purpose of God. It is our duty. If we are to love and serve Christ in this nation, we are to abide by its laws, to work for the change through legal means, and not to bring shame and disrepute upon our nation. Anyone who has rioted and destroyed property and destroyed lives from the beginning of last year until yesterday is someone who deserves the full weight of the law. Let's pray a bit. Heavenly Father, we pray that calm and sensible minds would reign, that we would use the wisdom you have given us to govern ourselves fairly and justly, to create government in such a way that it treats all the citizens of this nation with fairness and equity, so that no one is denied their rights, no one is cheated out of anything that is of theirs to have under our nation so that we can work together even if we do not always agree in a way that is peaceful and harmonious. Lord, we ask too that as believers you would keep us vigilant so that we do not engage in their extremism, but we continue to engage one another in mercy and grace. 
looking upon one another with all charity. Father, these are challenging days for our nation. Please let thoughtful hearts and minds prevail so that these disturbances can be put into the proper perspective and we can move forward as a nation. We give thanks for listening to us pray today. We have asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Make it a point, should you ever get into a political conversation, to not be thinking about what you're going to say in response to what the other person is saying. But first, listen carefully to what they are saying. Ask thoughtful questions and engage them in a productive conversation. No shouting back and forth at one another, because that doesn't go anywhere. Give it a try. I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. And until then, goodbye now.